Hello. Um, uh, today, uh, it might be quite <clears throat> obvious what I'm going to uh, talk about because of my what I am wearing and all, but on the off chance one does not know, I'm going to talk about, um, even based on the title, um, I'm going to talk about 8 Mile, um, <clears throat> which is 20 years old this year. DVD and uh, the Blu-ray. Now I got this first, um, the Blu-ray DVD and digital copy, and then I got this later, the steel book. Um, <clears throat> one thing that is a bit unfortunate. Um, here's the uh, back, which was the uh, little tagline for the movie. <clears throat> One downside to the uh, Blu-ray is there really is no brand new special features to this movie. It's just the same as the DVD, which is not bad. Uh, you know, it's good to see that the DVD special features like of the making of and the Superman music video from the Eminem show and um, <clears throat> um, other rap battles and <clears throat> stuff like that all made it to the Blu-ray because sometimes certain features are not included on the Blu-ray for some reason. Um, but luckily all those uh, uh, came about uh, and were repurposed for the Blu-ray. Um, but again, it's uh, unfortunate that this does not have new stuff to, uh, you know, like some sort of retrospective or anything. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> who knows, maybe when it, uh, maybe there'll be a 4K version. Maybe there already is one now, but perhaps one specifically for the 20th anniversary. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a, another version of this movie, which maybe then they'll have something brand new to have with uh, this movie. Like some uh, good amount of a retrospective of some sort to everybody who is a part of it that is still alive. Um some people in this film uh, are no longer uh, with us anymore uh, which is unfortunate um, but <clears throat> overall this movie is uh, you know takes place in Detroit which is where obviously Eminem is and it's a semi-autobiography semi um, really a uh, you know, you know about Eminem and his life, um, and you see this movie. Basically, it's a good time period of time of events in his life, which is condensed into I would say about a month in 1995. Um, you know, the timeline from when the film begins and ends is, you know, it's not necessarily the I don't know, it, it, a lot of stuff happens, but, you know, then again, a lot of things can happen in a short amount of time. Um, I don't know exactly if this film takes place in one month or not. You know, it's not explicitly said, but it's <clears throat> really good. You know, uh, there's uh, some stuff that does emulate Eminem's life. You know, rap battling, which is... Uh, how in Detroit he kind of got his start. You know, you got to start there, and he, you know, you know, in the film it it shows him, you know, Jimmy Smith Jr. who Eminem plays, uh, nicknamed B Rabbit. He uh, uh, it it looks like he hasn't battled before, but he's good at, you know. Uh, rhyming and stuff like freestyle and 
uh, writing down uh, lyrics and everything, but, you know, he, like, it, from the film at the beginning, it doesn't seem like he's ever bat battled against anybody at the shelter, which is where, you know, this all happens, takes place, all these rap battles that are very prominent. Um, and so, because of that, he goes up on stage in the, at the beginning and he uh, chokes and doesn't say anything. He's not able to, you know, say, uh, really get anything out. Uh, due to, uh, goes first, <clears throat> he uh, goes at him and, of course, one of the big things that is pointed out is he's white. Um, you know, there have been right rappers before, you know, like Beastie Boys and ICP, uh, uh, Vanilla Ice, and some others, perhaps, but, you know, those are the big, uh, uh, main white rappers that people really knew about back then, um, and Beastie Boys seem to be more respected in a way, because, you know, they, uh, you know, they, they, they just, they just appealed to people, and they were able to just sort of break in and break barriers in so many ways that, you know, ICP is basically, even you know, still today, has a, it has a very dedicated fan base, but they've never really broken into mainstream, so to speak, like they're known, but, you know, they, they just weren't necessarily seen as mainstream, I guess, if that makes any sense. And then Vanilla Ice, um, you know, he had Ice Ice Baby, and, you know, a lot of people after that, it's like, you know, like for white rappers, it's like it didn't seem like there's a lot to respect, even though they had good songs before and even after that song, it's like that's the one that stuck with him, it's, um, you know, for better and worse, um, you know, he's over for something, but, you know, um, it, I guess, depending on one's point of view, that could be either a good thing or a bad thing, but, uh, you know, he's still doing what he's doing, so hey, it hasn't really hurt him much, but, you know, so at that point, you know, with Eminem, you know, not really able to get too much um, going for him, you know, regardless of how well he uh, rapped and everything, him being white was like a, a pretty big factor in that, and we see that with Jimmy Smith Jr. and um, throughout the film, you know, we see his mom, played by uh, Kim Basinger, his best friend in the film, played by Kai Pfeiffer, his name is Future. Um, uh, based on his best friend, uh, Proof, who is in the film and is the first person he rap battles, and also Proof uh, sneaks in his, you know, name, you know, Proof, uh, in a line in the film. In the rep battle, where if you take the, the first letters of certain words he says, you can get proof. Uh, punish rabbit or obsolete future, that's what he says. And if you just take the first letters of those words, you get proof. Um, and so, you know, he chokes and, you know, he doesn't have a place to go because, you know, he, he and his girlfriend broke up. He, and he left her with the car. He says she's pregnant and, um, So obviously, you know, there's some stuff going on, and uh, which does sort of mirror, in a way, like a, a, his real life relationship with um, Eminem's real life relationship with um, Kim Scott, who, in 1995, uh, you know, it was the birth of his daughter Haley, who is in so many, who's referenced in many of his songs, and then is sort of the inspiration in this film uh, for his uh, B. Rabbit's sister, Lily. And um, uh, Kim Basinger is, uh, again, his mom. And she's dating a man, uh, Greg, and the, uh, who's played by um, uh, Michael Shannon, who is now very well known. But 
you know, he had done, he done stuff before this, obviously, but, you know, he, this was a film which was a fairly big success, and um, he, of course, would find success later on, uh, even more, so, but he, uh, he is in this, and, um, of course, Brittany Murphy plays Alex, and she becomes like a, a Bee Rabbit's girlfriend, and, um, you know, the acting in this film is really great. Um, Eminem is very good. You know, I know some people are like, you know, he's sort of playing himself or a version of himself, which, yes, and, um, but also at the same time being, uh, I'm a fan of Eminem. I know people might not necessarily know that, but, um, I am. I, I I enjoy all kinds of music, though I'm not totally fond of country overall. Um, I do like uh, people like uh, Johnny Cash, for instance. So, you know, I don't say there's no to, you know, country music, but you know, I think it, for that genre, I'm, I guess I'm more selective in what I like and what I don't. <clears throat> but I like rap, hip hop, you know, whatever you want to call it. And Eminem would be my favorite. He the lyricism and everything that he does in his songs is excellent and in many ways you know just unique you know he's definitely um, uh, an incredible rapper um, he bends words to make them rhyme with other words um, And he's just really good at what he does. Um, and so, myself, I'm able to see how in this film, he... There's some stuff in it that does rep, uh, reflect his life, but also there's stuff in this that did not happen in his life, and they've made it up just for the purposes of the movie and the story. And so, from that, it's like, you know, he is acting. He's in the sense of, he's another character he's not just himself you know he does have to really <clears throat> try to be convincing as a separate character uh, especially in the moments that did not happen to him and so you know he has to act like the character would act in those moments and so um, yeah Brittany Murphy was great uh, in this film also uh, may she rest in peace also, the guy, DJ, DJ, is the guy who plays him. His name is escaping me at the moment, um, fortunately. Um, but, um, I can edit that in a still what his name is. Um, you know, he passed away also. Um, uh, he had depression, I believe himself and he was very good in this film you know Brittany Murphy she had like pneumonia or something or and passed away unfortunately um, Curtis Hansen the man who made this film um, he passed away also some years back um, you know I forget offhand what he died of but uh, I believe he was in his 70s so might have I, I forget offhand but, you know, some, some big people who are associated with this film have passed away. You know, who played prominent parts or were very instrumental, obviously, the director. Um, but, yeah, he, uh, this, this film is excellent. It, um, uh, is one of those movies that, uh, for rap fans, like, people who aren't even rap fans can even enjoy it. You know, you don't necessarily have to like Eminem or his music or whatever because um, it's just a good film you know people say you know this is like the rap version of Rocky you know in a sense and in many ways it is um, uh, Anthony Mackie also is in this he's Papa Doc who uh, is like the leader of this group in the film called you know, Free World you know, bee rabbits, uh, uh, friends, and some others aren't totally fond of. You know, see them. Uh, uh, getting into the some 
fights and stuff with them, and uh, uh, B. Rabbit eventually gets beaten up. And also throughout the film, there's this guy who's sort of a link between these, trying to get people, like, you know, deals made for people, like, trying to get uh, uh, people deals so they can get big, and, uh, you know, that's something that he wants to do, but then, you know, as the time goes, as the film goes on, he decides to just do it on his own, save up money, you know, he's working at a place where they uh, press some bumpers, you know, because <clears throat> Detroit was a very big place for cars at one point, and, uh, so, uh, that's what he's doing, he's trying to get extra hours, and he's finally able to, and, uh, yeah, there's, it's, it's a very good film, um, and the film ends, uh, but the credits rolling over the song written specifically for this film, uh, Lose Yourself, which throughout the movie you can see him writing on a piece of paper, which is the paper that he wrote Lose Yourself on. And um, that song is my favorite song of all time. Um, I remember hearing it in 2002 and just really loving it. And um, I actually heard it after I graduated from high school on the way home something that was really cool just to hear about it, and I was real happy I don't know it just like just seemed like a a good sign I guess you know hearing my favorite song on the radio and um, of course I had heard uh, Eminem's songs of the before that were on the radio and popular and such so um, and saw him on MTV and all of the you know and, uh, this movie, you know, when I saw it later, I didn't see it right away when I was, like, eight. But I did see it, like, 12, 13, somewhere around there, and, um, really enjoyed it. I thought, it, you know, I thought it was great then, still do now, um, about 20 years later. It's really great. Um, and Lose Yourself, uh, won an Academy Award. For best original song, Eminem became the first rapper to win an Oscar. Um, I know I've said you know stuff like awards don't really mean much, um, particularly when some of the stuff that gets chosen to be winners and nominees are kind of either questionable or you just scratch your head at. <clears throat> and uh, but for this, um, uh, I think they got it right. Uh, I believe it is truly deserving of it, not just because it's my favorite song, all that aside, you know, it's just great, it's just great, uh, the lyrics and everything are excellent, and so, you know, uh, Eminem deserved it, he wasn't at the Academy Awards because he didn't believe he had a chance of winning, and so he was like a home, sleeping, Apparently also his daughter was, like, watching cartoons. So the Academy Awards weren't even on, you know, and he had to be woken up. Because, uh, like, um, <clears throat> like Dr. Dre was there, and uh, he was there for Eminem when he wasn't there himself to, like, support him. And when he won, you know, he called and told him, and he was, like, kind of confused. Because, you know, he, for him, he's like, you know, there's, like, rock songs and stuff, and so... I don't have a chance of winning, you know, because at that point in time, like, rap didn't, and as he said, like, rap didn't really get its share, a uh, fair shake on anything, really, in terms of, like, being acknowledged and winning awards. Like, up until his album, The Martial Matters LP, there had never been a rap album ever um, nominated for Album of the Year. And, you know, He didn't win album of the year, or I can't recall if uh, an album had a rap album has won album of the year. And again, I don't really follow the Grammys too much, so I can't recall off the top of my head. But uh, but yeah, for him, he's like you know, there's rock songs and stuff nominated, like 
U2 was nominated for the uh, song they made for uh, uh, Gangs of New York, and that was that was a big favorite to win, and so he probably thought, I'll lose to them, or maybe some other song. Um, but he won, and so he is an Academy Award winner. Uh, and I think that's something. That's something that's, you know, when it's it's great when a, somebody wins like an Oscar and they deserve it. Um, it seems like that doesn't happen too often anymore, unfortunately. Um, but when people anymore do win like an Academy Award, they deserve it. It's great uh, to see and great to hear. Uh, but yeah, even though he himself wasn't able to be there accept it he did uh, show up at the Academy Awards um, when they were honoring the films of 2019 back in 2020 a couple years ago he was there and he performed Lose Yourself for the very first time at the Oscars and I saw it I uh, I did I been I was told that he was performing and so and apparently was on somewhere and I just we're allowing back just to see the very beginning, and then as soon as it was done, I kind of just went and did something else because I'm like, you know, that was cool. But I don't necessarily care to see the Oscars, but um, that was cool to see. Um, and overall, it's a, this is a really great movie. Um, I could continue on with the plot and all, but. Uh, you've seen it you already know and if you haven't seen it yet I don't want to spoil it at all but you know the performances are great really well written and the music is good um, even if you're not a fan of rap um, I'd say give it a watch it's less than two hours it's a uh, hour 51 minutes so yeah pretty good length for film and uh yeah uh it's you know so just be aware of like language and stuff like that and violence um but you know it's good you know i think it's good i enjoy it and um what do you think do you enjoy this movie do you dislike it are you on the fence are there things you like about it are there things you don't like Give your thoughts below if you want. And, um, yeah. I hope all of you are having a great day. Hope you're all having a... Had a great week. And I hope everybody will have a great weekend and a great week. I'll see you all next time.